In today's program, the Thai Prime Minister visits the newly reopened Phuket, while pro-democracy groups call for his resignation. And yet, more finger-pointing by officials regarding the increase in daily COVID numbers. Right, I'm sure it's not because officials failed to deliver vaccines on time or anything. But before we get to these stories, a shout out to Edward K for supporting the channel and becoming a Tiger legend. Thank you, Edward, for your support. Now, you can support the channel as well by hitting the join button and accessing our members only content. All right, on to the news. Thai Prime Minister General Prayutan Osha has called on all sectors on Phuket to work together for the country to make the sandbox reopening of Thai tourism a success. The PM was speaking while on a visit to the southern island, which reopened officially to vaccinated foreign tourists yesterday. The first international arrivals in 14 months jetted in on Etihad Airways, which had 25 passengers from Abu Dhabi on board. Another 322 arrived on three other international flights during the day. It wasn't quite the 1500 trouted by the Tourism Authority of Thailand, but it was at least a beginning of the pilot project. All sandbox participants will need to stay on the island for 14 days and undergo multiple COVID-19 tests before being free to travel around the rest of the country. After greeting bemused passengers from the Singapore Airlines flight, the Prime Minister then moved on to inspect security checkpoints and other preparedness around the island. The Tiger will continue to report on the actual passenger numbers over the next few weeks. Police are warning people about a COVID-19 vaccine booking scam after 20 people in the Isan province of Udon Thani were defrauded by a fake life insurance company promising Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccines. A spokesperson for the Royal Thai Police says the fraudulent group claimed they could obtain the Chinese-made vaccines from the Federation of Thai Industries. They advertised a two-dose package for 1,800 baht. They created a line group called Vaccine Cinefarm and invited potential victims to join the group. More than 1,000 people were members of the line group, so police suspect the number of victims could be quite high. Similar scams have surfaced in Samutrakan, Nontaburi, Konken, and Bangkok, involving people transferring money to fake life insurance agencies for a vaccine. The victims all transferred money to the same Kasikon Bank branch in Saraburi, so officers suspect the same group is involved. The pro-democracy Rasadon group has another march on this afternoon, calling once again for the resignation of Prime Minister Prayutan Ocha. Activists are also organizing a flea market to show its opposition to the current ban on dining in at restaurants in Bangkok and a number of other provinces. The controversial restrictions were introduced at short notice last Monday, taking restaurant operators by surprise. The group points out that while many other countries around the world are emerging on the other side of the pandemic, the situation in Thailand is rapidly deteriorating. The Rasadon group are also slamming the slow pace of the vaccine rollout, adding that people who are enduring financial hardship as a result of the government's restrictions and being left to fend for themselves. We'll be right back after this quick break. Want to keep up to date with what's happening in Thailand? Download the Tiger app. It works on both Android and Apple. And it's free. All the latest news, videos and information at one click from your phone. Go to your Play Store or App Store and download now. One of the world's smallest active volcanoes, the Tal Volcano in the Philippines, is forcing tens of thousands of residents to evacuate after it started blasting out a kilometer-high plume of gas and steam yesterday. The alert went out that the volcano, which is 70 kilometers south of the capital Manila, had jumped from level 2 to level 3, which indicates that magmatic intrusion at the main crater that may further drive succeeding eruptions. Despite being only 311 meters tall, the volcano can still pack a punch. In 1911, its eruption killed over 1,300 people. 
Almost 15,000 people had had to be moved to safer areas. Dump trucks and low loaders were also sent in to help. Health officials are pointing fingers at Thai workers who left their Bangkok and nearby dormitories for the COVID outbreaks throughout the nation. Thai media are reporting that many construction workers left their home provinces prior to Monday's new lockdown. Health officials say many of the new COVID infections seen in over 30 provinces are connected to people coming from Bangkok and close by provinces. The narrative is a change from the past blame game, which was usually aimed at foreign migrant workers. The CCSA also says that many of the COVID spreaders throughout the country are believed to be Thai construction workers leaving the city's crowded worker dormitories. Another record high in COVID-related deaths and an uptick in coronavirus infections was reported today by the CCSA. They recorded 61 more deaths involving COVID-19 patients and 6,087 new infections, the highest daily count of community cases since the start of the pandemic. The trend continues to be in an upward trajectory for both new cases and deaths, while the rollout of vaccines continues at pace. Foreign cash is flowing out of Southeast Asian equities, backed by concerns that a COVID surge will dent the region's economic recovery. The ongoing patchy vaccine rollout suggests that the sell-off may be here to stay for a while. Thailand, the Philippines and Malaysia had combined outflows of 2.7 billion U.S. dollars from their equities in the April-June period, the biggest exodus since Q3 last year. Investors' expectations that vaccine rollouts will help reopen economies in Southeast Asia are being dashed for now as countries struggle to contain the highly transmissible Delta variant of the virus. Well, it's Friday and many in Bangkok are probably wondering what the heck am I going to do this weekend with all these restrictions? Well, I can go to the park and I've noticed a lot of people doing this. I can walk around the mall, but I can't sit anywhere. Outdoor activities like wakeboarding are still open. And a friend of mine said she's been going to a gymnastic studio, which is somehow open as opposed to gyms. Also, massage shops are still open, but they offer only foot massages. I can also buy groceries and throw a party at my house. And realistically, even though officials say they'll be imposing checkpoints, I still hear about people being able to sneak through to neighboring provinces. So still a lot of stuff going on. And even though officially construction is banned, there definitely still is construction going on in my neighborhood. But you know what? I'm not going to complain because many can't afford to have their livelihoods canceled. And that brings me to the most important issue, which is one thing a lot of people have been wanting to do, but getting denied and postponed time and time again is getting vaccinated. So one thing people are definitely going to be doing over the weekend is wondering when officials would finally get their act together in such a crucial time, because it really doesn't matter how many outrageous restrictions are imposed on the public if officials can't even fulfill their part of their duties. But hey, it's not like their jobs are at stake. Many were never elected in the first place anyway, and will continue to collect a fat salary while telling small businesses to close down. Anyway, I'll still be here next week to report on the latest in Bangkok. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and สวัสดีครับ.